Hello, good morning. Welcome back. My name is Sam Connolly, and I'm an educator at the Children's Museum and Theater. Um, as some of you probably know, we come to you live every morning at 1030. And today we're going to be talking about tiny worlds and changing up our perspective. So if you're like me, you've probably been stuck in your house for a little while now. And things are probably getting a little old. Maybe you've played with all your toys and they seem boring. Maybe you've looked at all your books. Maybe you're just feeling like everything is old and boring. So today we're going to talk about a way to change up what's called your perspective and think about things in a new way and an exciting way and maybe try some new things too. So what's perspective? Have you heard that word before? So everybody has their own perspective. It's this really cool, unique thing that you have and it is just yours. It's when you go out into the world and you use all of your senses. So you use your eyes and your nose and your mouth and your ears and your fingers and you get, you bring in as much information. And then what makes it different is that you get to interpret it however you like. So the way that you think about what you're seeing and experiencing is unique to you. And that's called a perspective. So we're going to change up our perspective and challenge it a little bit today. And I'm going to give you some techniques. So one thing you can do is you can physically change what you're looking at. So you'll notice today I'm sitting on the floor. We're going to even get a little bit lower in a minute, but we're going to physically change our perspective and physically change what we're seeing so that we might see things in a different way. And one really simple thing that you can do is you can make something called a viewfinder because today we're going to be talking about, or we are talking about tiny worlds, right? So look at this tiny hole. It allows me to only see one thing at a time and it blocks out all the rest. Like, check it out. See if you can notice anything new in my room that you didn't notice before. Hmm. Did you see anything different? Did anybody see that frox behind my head? Or the frog? I couldn't see because of the comments if you guys could see the frog or not. But maybe you'll notice something different that you didn't see before. So viewfinders are really easy to make. I just used a box cutter with this one. But what you can do is you can just take a piece of paper and fold it in half. And you want your square to be small, right? Because we're talking about tiny worlds today. And you just cut a little rectangle right here on the side, right around that folded edge. So when I open it up, I've got a little viewfinder. And you can experiment. If you move, hold it close to your face, I hold it close to the camera you're going to see a little bit more than when I hold it far. So you can change what size you're looking at. You also might want to get down low. So I'm going to bring you guys down low. But first I want to show you I've established my space. So establishing a new space can be a new way to mix up your where you are. So I've got I spread out this piece of fabric which is actually a scarf. You can use a yoga mat or maybe um, a placemat, something to establish a new space that can be kind of exciting. Maybe it's really colorful, maybe you want it to not be so colorful. And then I'm actually going to get down really low to see if I can see some different things. Alright. Oh, hello. Welcome to the floor of my living room. Alright, so you can change your perspective, get down low, maybe you see something that you haven't seen before. And then the next thing that you can do is think about curating or gathering, gathering materials that you wouldn't normally think go together. So I've got some materials that you might not expect. Hi Thomas and Ursula, I saw you guys earlier over here. How's it going? Hello Charlotte, how's it going guys? So let me know if you find some cool materials that don't normally go together. So of course at the museum and theater we always love our natural materials. So I got some tons of natural materials and some rocks and pine cones. And I made some tree cookies from, I cut down a tree in my neighbor's yard and I gathered some of those. Let me know in the comments if you wanna know how to make tree cookies. Those are pretty fun. And then I went into my recycling bin and I got some tin foil and cardboard. Hmm. And then I decided, well, I got some plants too. I decided I was going to go into my junk drawer. Does anybody have a, a fun junk drawer in their house that just has random odd things? So, see if you can use some stuff in there. I found some shoelace. And some old game pieces. From Monopoly that didn't have a home anymore. 
and a really shiny penny. And some marbles and keys and all sorts of, ooh, an earring that didn't have a another um, pair anymore. So I brought all of these things together that normally don't go together. And I'm gonna create a tiny world out of them. So, oh, and of course, yeah, maybe you wanna bring in some of your toys. Some toys that wanna interact with your tiny world too. These are gonna be my little creatures. And then you wanna think about what story do you wanna tell? What do you, what new world do you wanna make today? And it's easy to do because it's just small, right? And you've got all these things that normally don't go together. That can be kind of fun and exciting. Now, one way to really bump up an activity, or this activity too, besides picking a new space, thinking about a new perspective, is learning how to use a new tool. So I was thinking about tiny worlds and I was trying to think about what tool is a good thing to use with little things. And I decided to bring in this guy. Has anybody ever used one of these before? Maybe you have one at your house. I really love using these with kids and we use them a lot in the maker space. This is called a hot glue gun. So today I'm just gonna give you some language. Maybe you wanna explore a new tool today. So this is a hot glue gun. Maybe you have one in your house and maybe you wanna follow along and try to use it with me. So the back side of the hot glue gun is hard and stiff. It's actually plastic and you can touch the back side of it. It goes in really hard like a little tube. And then once the hot glue gun's plugged in, see it's got some electricity, the machine is gonna heat up and you can put your finger right here and feel that it's warm. It's actually getting really hot because what's happening is the plastic's going in and it's getting melted. Now this silver spot on the end is where it's gonna be very hot. So I wanna make sure that my fingers never go near the silver spot on the end. But, so check it out. When I push the trigger, instead of being hard, the glue is gonna flow. So check it out. So once you push the glue out, you wanna wait till a, the count of about 20. And it should harden nice, uh, nicely. But when it's hot like this, without touching it, I can put things inside of it and they will stay there. So this might be a new challenge that you wanna try with your kiddos or maybe you decide you wanna tackle another tool. But bringing in new tools can be really exciting and even though they are, they may be a little dangerous, this guy's hot, taking risks can be, an int can be really important for kids. So I got my penny. Um, I was also thinking about I could make a little table with my tree cookies. So remember when I squeeze the hot glue gun, it's gonna come out hot. So I always wanna make sure that it's, the glue's gonna fall flat. You don't wanna be gluing up because then it might fall onto your finger. So make sure you're gluing on a flat surface. And then when you're done, you place the glue gun on a piece of cardboard because sometimes it does leak out. You don't wanna get it on fabric or anything. So remember my glue is nice and hot. I'm just gonna take some sticks. a good lesson. If you let the glue sit too long, it'll harden. Well, let's see if I can finish up my table. So yeah, what tools do you have at your house that you'd like to explore? Are there any tools that you would like me to explore on camera and help you guys learn how to use? All right, I'll count to 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20. And check it out, the glue's hard. It's not that liquidy, flowy material anymore. It's turned back into that hard glue stick on the end. And check it out, I made a table. This one's definitely not gonna stand up because my sticks are not the same length. I'd have to measure my sticks to get a better length for this. But check it out, now I've got something for my polar bear to eat his fish off of. So yeah, so think about different perspectives get down low, make a viewfinder, gather materials that you wouldn't normally together, and maybe today you wanna to use a new tool to think about things in a new way or make something new. So thanks for coming down on the floor with me today, guys. Um, 
join us tomorrow morning. We've got more programs every every day. We have some new events coming up. We have some cooking this Sunday. We're going to be making some um, some pizza dough this Sunday. So catch us catch us live Sunday morning or every morning at ten thirty. Um, and if you ever miss anything, you can go back to um, www.kitetales.org slash online, and we have all our videos there. So thanks so much for joining me, guys. I'll see you later. Take care.